Hey there, and welcome to my tutorial about underwater bubbles. They come in all sorts of shapes, and their sparkliness can give your underwater scene a nice extra touch. This, by the way, is part of my tutorial series about water, already tackled water drops, and other topics like waterfalls, waves, splashes, clouds, and so on will follow soon. The plan for this video is that at first I will draw some simple bubbles live and explain the drawing process. And after we are done, I will show you some prepared drawings and explain in detail how these bubbles actually work. Alright then, let us start. Thank you. So here I have a blue background, which is supposed to be an underwater scene. To paint something like this, you just create a gradient from light to dark blue. Other color hues work too, of course. Important is that you use the same color palette for the bubbles themselves. They mostly have the same colors as the water background. Also, this is supposed to be a scene in the ocean, or some other huge body of water. Therefore, the light only comes from above. If you have a small water tank, a bottle, or something like that, then the light most likely comes from other directions too. That would also change how the light reflections and shadows on the bubbles look like. Alright, now that we have established the basic setting, let's actually start painting. At first, I make some kind of rough outlines for the basic wobbly round shape of this bubble here and fill in the lower half with this blue, which is going to be our darkest blue. I will go from the darkest to the brightest colors. And here in this case, which is more of a choice of style, I have a slightly brighter color for the bottom. And then this darkest color will form some kind of line from one side to another. Then we progressively pick the brighter and brighter colors until we get to the very top, which is going to be very bright. Here I'm just basically sketching out the basic color shades. This is not going to be a very clean drawing because I'm rushing this. That's why we have to prepare drawings so you can have something better looking. And the next step would be to establish some smoother transitions between the colors by smudging them out. Here and there you might still want to leave some sharper edges though. This is basically up to you and the style you want to go for. If you're not able to smudge the colors because of the paint that you're using for example, then you have to plan a little bit more carefully from the beginning. Then as the next step, what I'd like to do is add some random round shapes into the middle of this bubble. And this is going to create an interesting texture. Some random reflections that you can see. And this will give the bubble a nice extra touch. But be careful to not overdo it, it can happen very easily. And then we go ahead and smudge out these shapes too. And what you can go for is leaving out one side of these shapes still relatively sharp. And this gives it an interesting texture. And then as the last step you add here and there some tiny highlights in addition to this large highlight at the top. This from the light that shines from above. But with these tinier highlights that can also point in other directions, you can give your bubble some extra sparkliness. But again, don't overdo it. So you basically can spend a lot of time on just one singular bubble and add a lot of tiny details. But you can also go the other way around and just draw a bubble really quickly. So for example, to draw a small bubble, at first, again, the darkest color. Then, I take a brighter color, like a medium shade and only paint out like about half and then the brightest color for the highlight at the top this round form and then here there are some smaller ones and there you go you already have a tiny bubble and so this way you can draw a lot of tiny bubbles really quickly in all sorts of shapes and if you make super tiny bubbles well you can just go ahead and draw them as little dots that's already totally fine I also would like to demonstrate what you can do if you're not able to go from the darkest to the brightest color because of the tools that you're using. So if you want to go from the brightest to the darkest, first of all, we have here a shape that has been left out, that's kind of cut out from the background. 
and then we basically sketch out the top highlight and then a bunch of tinier highlights here and there and just make these round shapes and these white areas will be left out we have to avoid them when we paint out the bubble and so I'm going to fill out the rest like so and then I'm going in with the next shade still being careful to avoid all of these tiny details and create a shade once again from bright to dark here in this case I'm just gonna make a very simple gradient so one color after another and in the end everything will be smudged out again um, but what you can do is also leave out a line at the bottom that is supposed to be maybe some kind of reflection maybe from some kind of object below the bubble and it is also a nice style for the bubble in general and then you simply smudge everything out again I will do this very quickly once again you can add here and there some shapes but in this case you have to paint into the brighter areas with a darker color And another more stylistic choice that you can make is give these highlights some kind of outlining. I, for example, like to do this outlining only on one side. And this outlining is not very strong, it's just slightly darker. And this gives it a nice extra touch. You can also go ahead and smudge out some of the details if these lines have been drawn a bit too sharply. In order to give you more and better looking examples, here are some small to medium sized bubble drawings that I prepared beforehand. I actually drew these live during one of my streams a while ago. Here in this case I gave these bubbles a more smudgy, paintery look. In order to make them extra shiny looking, you can use some kind of airbrush tool or some light white color and create this bloom effect. The style you draw your bubbles in is completely up to you. It is your decision whether you draw them more cartoony or more realistic. Well, let's talk about the shape of these bubbles. They look quite wobbly, and most bubbles won't be perfectly spherical. These bubbles actually want to be spherical, because of something called surface tension. Let me explain that at first. So we have a body of water here, with a bubble inside. It is filled with some kind of gas, let's say air in this example. The water molecules feel an attractional force between them that pulls them together. That is called cohesion. If you look at a molecule right inside the body of water, it will experience that force from all sides equally. Therefore, in total, all of these forces add up to zero. It is perfectly balanced out. However, if you look at a molecule at the surface, it only gets attracted towards the water body. The net force is non-zero. These molecules don't want to be in that state. They want to be in balance, in a state of minimal energy, as to say. So the body of water will try to reduce its surface area as much as possible to reduce the amount of molecules in that undesired state. The air doesn't mix with the water very efficiently, instead it displaces the water, which creates a surface between the air and the water. A sphere is the three-dimensional shape with the lowest surface area per volume. Therefore the bubble wants to form a sphere, or more precisely, the water forces the air into a sphere shape. I hope you're still with me. I know, a lot of physics are involved. But in my opinion, if you have a basic understanding of how the object you want to draw works, then it will be a bit easier for you to make it look believable. Also, I think those kind of science facts are a need to know. Okay, we still don't know why bubbles most of the time do not have a spherical, but some kind of wobbly shape. Well, the surface tension is not the only force at play here. First of all, we know that bubbles always float upwards. That is because of something called buoyancy. Objects that are less dense than the fluid around them float upwards. If they are denser, then they sink. So these underwater bubbles experience a buoyant force pointing upwards. Gases are obviously less dense than liquids, therefore the buoyant force is greater than the gravitational pull, its weight. 
That explains why a bubble floats up, but the deformation happens because of another effect, viscosity. It is the friction between the bubble and the water surrounding it as the bubble moves upwards. There's a law in physics called conservation of momentum. The water doesn't want to be moved away, it resists against being displaced by the bubble, and that causes friction. So we have a force pointing downwards. Well, mostly. It can be a bit more complicated than that, it depends on the shape of the object. And it also depends on the viscosity of the fluid, the thickness you could say. A bubble would behave differently in a thick substance like honey, compared to water, which has a low viscosity. So that friction causes the bubble to be flattened. However, fluid dynamics are complex, and so the bubbles don't just uniformly take on some kind of disc shape. They wobble around, and as they travel up the water, they don't move in a straight line, but have a zigzag or spiral trajectory. At least that is the case for small bubbles. The larger they are, the more chaotic their shape and travel path becomes. I will talk about large bubbles in more detail soon in this video. Another force is also the water pressure. The weight of the water above the bubble's top surface. The deeper you go, the more it will affect submerged objects, including bubbles. An important factor is also that at higher pressures, the air, which is mostly nitrogen and oxygen, dissolves faster in water. A gas bubble is not perfectly isolated from the liquid around it. Some molecules always escape that bubble. So in very deep waters, bubbles like these wouldn't be able to exist. At least not for long. It also depends on the type of gas though. And this by the way was something I wasn't able to find concrete answers for. So if you know more about bubbles in deep waters, please educate me and everybody else in the comments down below. Let's talk about how light is reflected off and travels through an air bubble. For that purpose, I created a simple simulation with this very convenient website. To explain the elements of it, the black areas are air and the grey areas are water. Both of these circular shapes are the same size and have point light sources equally far away which send out light rays in all directions. This simulation calculates how these light rays are traveling through these different materials. The top setup is supposed to represent a water drop in mid-air. You probably recognize this if you watched my tutorial about water drops. The bottom setup shows an air bubble surrounded by water. For demonstration purposes, I simplified it as a circle. If a light ray hits one of these surfaces, part of it gets reflected and part of it transmits through into the other material. When a light ray goes from one material to another, it will get refracted and changes its angle. You have seen this effect, for example a straw in a glass of water. It has to do with how dense a material is. Light is traveling slower through water than through air. The thing is, and you probably already can see it, the light rays are refracted the opposite ways in both cases. In the water drop they are converging, bundling together, and in the air bubble they are diverging, spreading out. You might know about convex and concave glass lenses. The water drop would be a convex lens and the air bubble behaves like a concave lens. Therefore, if you look through them, the water drop has a magnifying effect and the air bubble a reducing effect, making objects appear smaller. When I increase the ray density, you can clearly see where the focal points are. The air bubble does not have any real, but virtual focal points or images. It even has two, one for the refracted rays of the front and one for the back surface. So you might ask, what is the point of me explaining this stuff to you if you won't encounter spherical air bubbles anyways? Well, there is a way to make nicely formed spherical air bubbles inside of water. You just have to remove gravity out of the equation. This picture has been released by the European Space Agency, ESA, and was shot on the International Space Station. I could have made a drawing to illustrate this effect, but in this case I found this photo so cool that I just wanted to show this instead. Also, it's less work for me. You can nicely see the opposite effects of the water drop and the air bubble inside of it. The air bubble is basically reversing the effect of the water drop, flipping the image back around. They are not perfect lenses, so there is still some distortion happening. And I do have to say that it is not quite the same as if the camera and the object would also be in the water. I was not able to find any photographs of that kind, and if I don't have any references whatsoever, I'm not going to make a drawing of it for the tutorial. And I can't make photos like that myself. 
because I simply don't have the tools. The setup would be anything but trivial. In the majority of cases, you won't need to draw some kind of projected images inside underwater bubbles anyways though. But if you know more about this and got some image material, I would appreciate it a ton if you share your knowledge and sources with us. Alright, I'm actually not quite done yet. So far we only talked about small to medium sized bubbles. Now let's tackle the real large ones. So this would be a typical shape for a large bubble. Quite weird looking, like some kind of jellyfish. These large bubbles take on this form because they are so strongly flattened by the friction between the water and the bubble. It has a rounded top to let the water flow around it as easily as possible. The bottom however is quite wobbly. And the center of the bottom is hollowed out like some kind of upside down bowl. The surface of this bubble also shows some ripples following the curvature of the bubble. By the way, if this bubble would be in a thicker fluid, then its shape would become more compact and round, and its bottom would be less chaotic. I also recorded the drawing process of this bubble cluster. I can tell you that it is not easy, especially the ripple pattern on the surface. It can easily happen that you overdo it and the bubble looks like some wrinkly sack. The top is very bright and shiny, while the bottom remains quite dark. Also you can go ahead and add some layering to the bottom part, to separate the front and back part of it. Bring in some chaos into the drawing. A bubble of that size is very unpredictable and can have some wild ripple patterns, especially the lower half. They are also quite unstable, so there might be some smaller bubbles forming and cutting off. These large bubbles are always followed by a trail of smaller ones. The number can vary, but I have not seen a singular photo of just one isolated large underwater bubble. I also want to say that especially for complex shapes like this, I recommend to use references. It will make the drawing process so much easier. Well, that's all I have to say about these bubbles. However, I am not completely done yet. I have one more drawing, a special drawing. Here it is. As an extra challenge, I painted a whole scene, including the underwater bubbles we have been talking about this whole video. This lady is supposed to be a musician called Christy Cates and she's playing at this underwater Pokemon party. You can see some water Pokemon blowing some bubbles to make this party even sparklier. And Christy is sitting in a large heart formed bubble. Obviously this shape is completely unrealistic, but who cares? I also wanted to show you that you don't have to exactly follow this tutorial. You can be creative and shape your bubbles however you want. Draw them in whatever style you want, with whichever tools you have available. Here in this picture you can still tell that this heart is supposed to be an air bubble. And that's enough. If you want to know how I drew this picture and learn some background info about it, then you can also watch the narrated time-lapse video of it, which will come out one week after the release of this video. I can tell you, it was really a lot of fun drawing this picture. It makes me happy looking at it, and I hope it has a similar effect on you. So that was it for the tutorial. Underwater bubbles are just so fascinating and pretty. I really enjoyed doing research for this video. There were so many things that I didn't know before. And as a former physics student, I absolutely feel in my element with a tutorial topic like this. I do want to mention though, that doing all of this research and trying to make these tutorials as extensive and informative as possible consumes a lot of time, often several months. And therefore, the rate at which I release my tutorial videos is very slow. Consequently, I do not have that many tutorials yet in my video library. Which is not good for the growth of this channel. So if you want to support my work, please share my videos. And if you have the means, you can also support me on Patreon. You would additionally get a bunch of rewards for it, even if you only donate $1 per month. I feel very uncomfortable talking about this sort of stuff, but well, it can't be helped. If you are still here, then let me thank you for watching. That alone helps this channel a lot. As always, if you have any questions or constructive feedback, then please leave a comment or join the community on Discord. You can find the Discord link and many other links and information down below in the description. Alright then, have fun drawing.
Thank mm -hmm. you. 